Of all the years of foldables now, ever since the original Galaxy Z Fold, I have not seen any of the big folds out in the wild. I've never seen a Pixel Fold that's newer. We'll give them a break. I have never seen anyone carrying around a Galaxy Fold device in five generations now, and I certainly haven't seen somebody with a OnePlus Open. I have, however, seen plenty of people with several generations of Galaxy Flip devices, and I really think that that's the most consumer-friendly version of a Flip. Of all the form factors that are going to survive and be successful, I really think it's this one because it offers you all the convenience of a full smartphone. It opens up to a gorgeous 6.7 inch display, but it doesn't give you, it doesn't take up all that space. It goes down to a nice compact form factor that fits in a pocket and fits in the palm of your hand. It's a form factor that we recognize from back in the day. And those other folds, while super convenient, and I love them, especially you got an online business, you're on YouTube, something like that. They're fantastic to have all that screen real estate. They are pretty bulky. They're double the size, double the width. Sometimes they're getting better with that of a regular smartphone, but it's just a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, while this trend is to go lighter. And I really like that. And the Flip 5 certainly does that well. It's not as flashy as the Moto Razr Plus, but a lot of people are okay with that. And I think I've said this a few times. If you're getting a Flip for the first time or going to delve into foldables for the first time, I really think you should go with a Samsung. You get all the advantages of several generations of devices now. You get the, that hinge technology that I think is really solid. I overall love the build quality of the Samsung devices. So if you're a little on edge, if you're unsure of it, if it, it feels unnatural to bend glass in half for you, then go ahead with a Samsung. So here's the Black Friday deal at Cyber Monday and pretty much going until December 3rd. It's one of those goofy ones with Samsung again where you're looking at the app. The link will be in the description. You got to go on your phone, okay? Because Best Buy's got it for $7.99, but that's not the best deal possible. I'll, put, I'll include the Best Buy link as well, but that's not the best deal possible. Through the app, the base price on this becomes $7.50 with the enhanced trade-in offers up to $600. So realistically, or, or theoretically, I should say, you could pick up one of these for the lowest price of 150 bucks. And I think if you could somehow, and a lot, you might say, well, let's say you got to have this and the other. I've got people picking up S23 Ultras right now because I can see the orders on the back end for 300 bucks. So if you could somehow work the system and beat the casino and pick up one of these for 150 bucks, 200 bucks, even 250 bucks, I think you're really doing a fantastic job. And we'll talk about it. Outer display, while it's not as free form, as the Moto version of the outer display, it feels a bit more on rails. It's still a really nice experience. You got kind of the glorified large notification display. I get it. But when you go ahead and put good lock on here, then it breaks it out a little bit and you get a little bit more functionality as you would on the Moto Razr Plus display. We talked about the build quality. Really nice. You do pick up IPX8 water resistance on this so a little bit more peace of mind you bring it in the rain you bring it outdoors you bring it around water i mean don't make the habit of that but if you're outdoors you don't have to feel like if your pocket's wet that you're going to damage your phone by placing it in your pocket software i think is really what saved samsung devices for the past couple of years now it certainly hasn't been innovation but i do think that software with one ui 5.1 and now one ui 6 which i'm using on my s23 ultra i really like it silky smooth Still the best software experience you're going to find out there. Animations are great. Software runs fantastic on it. And when you're pairing with that with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, then you're really going to never find yourself in a position where you're lacking power, whether it be those AAA titles, gaming, even though I myself don't like gaming on these displays. I think the plastic film on top just feels weird when you're trying to drag your thumbs across the screen. I don't like it. The rest of it, down the line, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. Nothing overwhelming there, but it is certainly going to get the job done for the next couple of years. The one thing that's been a major upgrade the past two years on the flip devices is battery life. And of course, that continues with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. You're getting all those battery optimizations. And you know, everyone says that the heat optimization, this phone, if you're updating, if you're really tasking it, you put your finger to the top display here, you're going to feel it get a little warm. But nothing that would be alarming and certainly nothing that affects battery life. Still well over six hours of screen on time, which I know might not seem like a lot coming from the flagships, especially with something like the S23 Ultra, some of those other devices out there. But for a flip, smaller phone, smaller form factor, smaller battery cell, 
that is an impressive number, six, six and a half hours. And that's without ever really taking any precautions. I, I run the, the reactor at 110%. I want the brightness all the way up. I want the 120 hertz on, the adaptive on, the whole thing. I want to use it the way it was designed to be used. And I still get that fantastic battery life. So I really like it. It's a little thicker than some of the other fl uh, flippables you're going to find out there. The screen is a little bit smaller. So it's 6.7 inches, but it just feels more compact than something like the 6.8 inch Razer Plus. So you got to decide whether you like that or not. Good luck. Samsung has the best. You see, well, that's the other advantage for Samsung. They have the regular best, sl the best slab software, just regular glass slab software, but they also have the best flip fold software in terms of good lock and adjusting and see this they, they make the smaller aspect ratio work on this display you don't feel like you're missing anything good lock has really come a long way in adjusting these apps to fit whatever display flip or fold display that they happen to be displayed on and it is a really fantastic experience so samsung you get that additional engineering that of the samsung foldables where the software really matches the hardware experience and tailored to the hardware experience so that's why i think that samsung still has an advantage when it comes to these newer form factor devices you get wireless charge on here it's not the fastest charge in the world but you're going to be putting it on the charger overnight you got the fingerprint sensor on the side the nice band here really just a overall fantastic design and i understand that that screen might seem a bit smaller and it's not quite what you get on your slab but it is a nice compact fit in the hand you do get the other side of that where it is a little thinner device is more kind of what i'm getting at but when you fold that closed it's a nice feeling in the hand i really like it you can fit this in a pocket it's unobtrusive you can carry this around you don't even feel like you're carrying a phone and of course the nostalgia factor of being able to go ahead and close it out on a call is really nice and if you're coming from a flip four that's really going to be a nice spot Flip 3 especially, I don't know what you get enhanced trade-in wise. Obviously, a 4 is going to be massive. You're going to get the 600 bucks uh, trade-in a Flip 4. You're going to get the, the trade-in offer and all the rest of it. So if you're somebody who held off originally trading in the Flip 4 because they kind of had that enhanced trade-in at the beginning where you could have gotten this for somewhere around 100 bucks. If you're somebody who missed that, it was a wait and see, you liked your phone, it's a few months later now, and you could probably get yourself into a situation where you're picking one of these up for 150 bucks and it's worth the upgrade just to be able to use the outer display which is really nice you put google maps on here it's really nice by turn by turn navigation you got your phone plugged in you're in the car that's something that the phones it's not a super fragile display okay but there's something about being in a car and having this open sitting in a cup holder wherever it happens to be sitting in one of those holsters that makes me a little uneasy with these displays still with turn by turn on the bigger display, you could go ahead, have it closed, have the, the Victus 2 on here and be able to go through the different apps and have your turn by turn on here and not have to worry quite as much. So while it's not as good an outer display as the Razer Plus, I do think it still has advantages and still works well. And I think overall the package for Samsung, when you factor in good luck, when you factor in the software, when you factor in the software support and the 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 track a track record that samsung now has of fantastic software support the last few years those are things that are going to tip the scales in the favor of the z flip 5 so do use those links it does help the channel if you made it this far like comment subscribe all that fun stuff until next time have that steve delicious